Hello and welcome to Star Citizen. My name is Even Lease, and today on 10 Minutes More or Less Ship Review, right behind me, a very versatile torpedo bomber, the Aegis Retaliator. Let's go ahead and take a look. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Today on another review, I'm taking a look at the Aegis Retaliator, which this ship just recently got all of its modularity as well as a gold standard pass. So it's looking beautiful and it is still quite amazing. Before I do that, let's go ahead and talk about the giveaway that is currently happening on my channel. And I do have another one starting really soon. And that's because the Foundation Festival is literally less than two days away on Friday. So keep an eye out for that video. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. You guys are really amazing. So I love being able to give back to you. So again, thank you all. Make sure you enter into the giveaways and uh, keep an eye out for the next one. <laughs> now, moving on, this ship here has quite a few different price points just because of how it's made and the in-game price. So currently, you can't buy the modules in-game from what I've seen. So there's no in-game price for the modules, which kind of hurts this ship. If you didn't pledge for it and buy the, you know, modules on the the modules on the online website um you might not be able to get those until the next time this ship goes on sale so right now the base tally uh it was 175 dollars past warbond so i'm not going to mention warbond throughout this whole video because warbond is done and over with if you didn't buy it for the warbond price which means like its initial sale price then you're not going to be able to get it at that price so the next time this thing goes on sale expect the base to be at 175 dollars and then if you were to buy this thing in game, you can for 7938000 AUEC. Now buying it in game, it just gives you the base tally. So all you have is this, this ship, no torpedoes, no cargo modules, right? So it's still not a terrible ship to have. It just, you can't do, you know, a ton of stuff with it without some of those modules, right? Outside of that, the cargo tally, when they had it for sale, uh, it was $225. That means you just get the cargo modules and the ship. The torpedo tally was $285. That's torpedoes only and the ship. And then if you were to buy all the modules with the ship, it was a total of $400. Again, none of those prices were war bond. Now, uh, hopefully when they have this thing on sale on the Pledge Store again, you can get the modules again. Those were for the cargo, $30 each, and then the torpedo bow was $75, and the torpedo stern was $50. So they're up there for just a module on a ship, which is quite surprising. So hopefully instead of, you know, blasting that in our faces, they can just add them in game so we can just buy them for a couple hundred thousand UEC or, you know, honestly, the cargo ones aren't even worth that cargo ones are worth 50,000 UEC a pop probably because think about it the only difference with the cargo ones is it adds a cargo grid to each one and an elevator right outside of that that's it so hopefully in-game prices reflect that um and for the same for the torpedo modules those could be a little bit different you know probably closer to the million dollar range uh for each one which I would totally understand it's a pretty big game changer right having the ability to throw a torpedo around that size so Getting into that, the DPS of this ship. The pilot has zero DPS. There is no pilot-controlled guns on this ship. The pilot, the only thing he has is torpedoes, if you have the torpedo modules, which they are size 9 Argos 9 torpedoes, and you do get six of them, which is quite amazing. And I'd say uh, if you're slinging those things around, you don't really have to worry about having guns, right? Especially if you have even one or two people on turrets, that will definitely make a difference as well. Because you do have five turrets on this ship, two at the front, three at the back, and they all have size 3 CF-337 Panthers. So those are throwing out a massive amount of damage if you have them, you know, obviously manned. Sooner or later, we'll be able to get AI crew in the game. I hope sooner rather than later, you know, I always keep hoping every time a new big patch is announced that I see that on the docket because it would be kind of easy, honestly, for them to do so. Think about it. All the AI ships in the game currently already have AI turret gunners. 
I mean, all you got to do is just add the ability on the ASOP terminal to purchase these gunners for a set amount of time uh, and just give the command to fire or don't fire, you know, at your targeted target or just a general fire, you know, fire on anything that fires on us type situation. They don't have to make it complex. You know, they don't have to make an animation of these guys walking onto your ship and stuff. Not initially, right? Start tier zero. Let's get the AI crew in there. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) I'd really like to have an AI crew. Not always am I going to have the ability to pull five people into my ship, right? Um, And then that even goes the same for bigger ships. Now, obviously, there's got to be some drawbacks to having AI, but this is a discussion for a whole nother video. Let's continue with the retaliator here. If you were to go away from the torpedoes and do a full cargo run on this ship with the cargo modules, you're looking at a total of 74 SCU. That's 38 on the bow and 36 on the stern. Now, that's not terrible, given the fact this is such a very versatile weapons platform with so much to it. It looks beautiful. She's huge, right? I mean, she's a pretty big ship. Uh, She flies like that, too. She flies very heavy. She's a big old whale. So don't expect to dodge things like your, you know, Jason Bourne, okay? Because this thing is, (laughs) she's she's a ship, all right? Uh, And she definitely flies like it. Now, if you can see on the outside here, the engines are pointing up and down. They do have VTOL thrusters, so you can activate that using the K key. As you see on screen, them opening and closing. Uh, They're pretty cool. You know, it's always nice to have VTOL thrusters with a ship of this size uh, because you're going to need it, right? Lifting out of some atmospheres or even just those pesky hangars sometimes. (laughs) All right, now that we're in the ship, I do want to let you know again, there's only one entrance if you have certain, you know, styles and everything on here. If you have any of the cargo modules, you do add more entrances. But without the cargo modules, you're looking at this one entrance here and an airlock that leads you to allowing you to dock with stations or other ships or just open it and run out and you know fall to the ground whatever you want to do there now i'm going to advise you this is the front of the ship here and this is the back of the ship this portion of the ship is pretty much mirrored side to side now as i go through this ship i'm going to tell you some of the stats that have changed from 3.22 to 3.23 okay Starting off, before we do that, you're going to see there is a lot of new buttons that you can press, like with lighting, opening, you know, storage areas, and also you have a nice engineer station here, which was here prior, but everything just looks so much nicer now that this ship's gotten its pass. You got your door here, which you can close by pressing the button on the inside of the door. Always find that to be a great idea, right? Never know when you're going to get your finger taken off by a door. And then uh, going back through, you're also going to see a lot of these little areas like this that have future, you know, areas for engineering. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how this goes. (laughs) Engineering and fire propagation are going to be the two biggest killers of large ships when you don't have a crew. So keep an eye on that. Hopefully they'll give us that AI crew sooner rather than later. Now, here is more component access. Like I said, they're mirrored. So each side of the ship pretty much has components, turrets, stuff like that. So let's go over those stats that have changed, right? Prior, this ship had 18,000 shield. Now it has 36,000 shield. And there's a reason for this trade-off, right? So you're wondering, hmm, wow, you have a lot more shield now. I wonder why. Well, it's a bubble shield, first of all. So when you take damage, you're going to take damage everywhere on that shield. And it's not going to last too long, right? Uh, Maybe it was a bubble shield prior. I I forget. But either way, it's a bubble shield. It's 36,000 and sidetrack these are storage lockers if you press f it'll open up your inventory and you can store stuff moving on another big change is your health pool this ship used to have one of the biggest health pools in the game now not so much it used to have 364,185 health points now it has 138,981 So not only did it take a massive hit in its health pool, but you also have more shield. So they kind of traded it off a little bit there, but there's another change to this ship that is actually benefiting it. This ship used to be six CF-337 Panthers and four CF-227 Badgers. Now it's all, you know, size three, 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 seven Panthers. So uh, you have 10 of those on the turrets. That's fantastic, right? So that is the big trade-off there. You got more firepower, more shield, but a bit less health points, uh, quite a bit less. Here is another turret access. Like I said, again, they are mirrored on each side. So pretty neat, pretty neat. 
this is what the torpedo room looks like in the back of the ship so pretty cool looking and they probably load it from the bottom once you run out you know sooner or later we have to manually load these things right <laughs> at least we should have the option to there's just a lot of neat things about this ship it looks fantastic it really does um it it feels very military right obviously it should uh, but now that it has modularity and you're able to add cargo to it, there's just so much you can do with this ship. Cargo, torpedoes, there isn't really anything it can't do. I, I feel like you can go out and do anything. You can do bunkers, you can do bounties, you can do anything with this ship as long as you have a few crewmates with you. You don't have to fully load up the crew, but I mean, gee, wouldn't that just look epic if you did? This right here is a bathroom for, you know, anybody that's out and about. It's good to have. Uh, looks great. You know, you got some more storage lockers here. You got a toilet. Um, not going to sit on that. You got a nice little sink and you have a shower, which is pretty cool. Always nice to have these things. And uh, yeah, no, no mirror. I don't see any mirrors. They just didn't want us to have any mirrors. They're like, you don't need to care about what you look like. Just get out there and do your job. <laughs> Front torpedo access here, so I already fired off those torpedoes as you saw in the video earlier. Moving on, let's head to the front of the ship where the crew will be spending most of their life outside of the turret, right? So if you're in those back turrets, you're pretty much screwed if you want to escape this ship. If you are going down, you need to know this is where you're going to have to go to get out of that ship, right? Your escape pods are not anywhere convenient, so expect that jog and, you know, untimely death. If you move through this door first, this is where the captain's quarters is. You're going to have a nice little bed, a little bit of storage, a little bit more storage, a nice little TV, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty neat little coffin if you want to, you know, lay in here while your ship is <laughs> under fire. Now, honestly, captain's chair, pilot's chair, right? Pilot's chair. That's the pilot's chair. You know it is, but the pilot is the captain, right? They're flying the ship. They're commanding the ship. By the way, I took off and didn't even tell you. <laughs> now, if we go up the ladder here, this is where your crew will be when they are not on a gun. Hopefully, hopefully not just dilly-dallying around the ship. You do have another turret access here. This guy is the luckiest out of them all. You're taking fire. You're about to go out. This is where you need to be. You got a bunch of weapon lockers here. Or not even really lockers. There's no safety or anything. You just put your guns down. That's all. No, no doors, no nothing. So a bunch of gun access there, though. And then you have your one, two, three, four, five, six little coffins here for you to sleep in when it's time to go to sleep or if it's time to eject from this shippo. <laughs> Lay in here in each one of these are a escape pod. Are a escape pod. Wow. Each one of these is an escape pod, and it's going to be a fantastic way to go out. Like I said, you have to run across the entirety of the ship, climb up a ladder, get in here, and hit that, you know, eject button, and hopefully you can get out when you do. But I'm just in love with this right here. Aegis, Retaliator, Torpedo Bomber, has windows when so many ships that you think would for the crew do not. This is fantastic, and it looks great. I mean, wow. Wow. <laughs> This crew is quite lucky to have some windows to kind of look outside in between, you know, their trips to bunkers and taking out targets. This is fantastic. What a great view, and it's good to see. Now, outside of all the crew, you know, ability and uh, everything like that, there's a few things missing from this ship, I feel like. There's just no kitchen or anything like that for your crew. So, you know, whenever you need to eat or anything, you're just going to have to stop at uh, Space Wendy's or something and grab a burger or something. Because, yeah, there's nothing here. There really is nothing. You just, you have your crew quarters, you have your supplies. So bring some food with you, pack a sandwich, bring some coffee, you know, bring some water. Do what you need to do because you ain't got it here. Uh, plain and simple. <laughs> but she's still a great ship outside of that. Honestly, I'm going to get into the pilot seat really quick, and let's talk about the final stats of this ship. Starting off with the speed of this ship, it is 200 SCM as a top speed with 400 forward boost, 205 backwards boost, as well as 1,000 nav speed. Now, outside of that, you do have 2,500 quantum fuel, so you can definitely go quite a few places and make quite a few stops uh, without making stops, right? But again, you don't have food, you don't have drink, so I don't know about that. Uh, you probably gonna have to make some stops, right? <laughs> this ship is quite amazing. There was quite a few different changes between 3.22 and 3.23. This ship does handle like a whale, and now it has its modularity and bigger weapons, and bigger shields. She is still fantastic, and she looks great. Uh, I can't get enough of her. I think 
The biggest drawback, obviously no pilot controlled guns expected with this type of ship. You already got so many guns on this thing. Are you really going to put more guns on it, right? <laughs> and no kitchen. You've got half a living quarter. You got beds, you got escape pods, you've got a bathroom. But unless you're prepping the food on the counter next to the toilet, yeah, you're kind of missing out on that. Did you know she also got a really big update to her sounds? She sounds amazing. Take a listen. And so now we got to talk about my review score. And honestly, this ship is going to be an 8 out of 10 for me. And the reason being is it just got its gold standard pass, but there's still a couple bugs with the ship, as well as it's missing a few things. You're missing a kitchen. You're missing armor lockers. Uh, obviously, there's no pilot-controlled weapons, but that's not really supposed to be on this type of ship. And I just feel like they're going to be adding a lot of these things via modules. And hopefully, they don't paywall that and they just put it on the store in game as soon as possible and they you know just allow you to buy these things with uec instead of forcing you to you know spend out of pocket money before you can actually get a lot of this livability right so that's where i'm at right now eight out of ten i can't wait to see the future modularity with all these different ships let me know what you think of the retaliator down in the comments below do you have one are you gonna get one and yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.